Hey, Julian Kras here, and I'm going to get you started in DaVinci Resolve in only 15 minutes. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of editing, color correcting, and exporting your footage with DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to focus on the very basic stuff so that you will be able to start using Resolve as soon as possible. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First of all, you do have to have DaVinci Resolve installed. You can get the non-studio version for free on Blackmagic Design's website. Ok, now let's start up DaVinci Resolve. The first thing you will see is your project database. Here all your Resolve projects will be stored in the future. As you can see, I already have some projects in this database and I could open up a project to work on it. But I'm guessing this is your first time using Resolve so you will not have any projects here. To start, we do have to create a new project. Double click Untitled Project and Resolve opens up a new project. Now let me give you a small overview of Resolve and explain the general workflow. At the bottom of Resolve you can see these different tabs. Media, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight and Deliver. And all of these have different windows which serve different purposes in DaVinci Resolve. So let's have a closer look at these tabs. In the Media tab you will be able to handle and organize all the media you need for this project. In the Edit tab you can, you already guessed it, edit your footage. The Fusion tab integrates Blackmagic's Fusion into Resolve. Fusion is used for things like visual effects and motion graphics. Next up we have the Color tab which is used to color correct and color grade your footage. After that we have the Fairlight tab. This integrates Blackmagic's Fairlight into DaVinci Resolve. Fairlight focuses on the audio side and it is used for mixing and mastering audio. And the last tab is called Deliver. And in this tab you will set up your render settings and then render out your video. I also want to emphasize that these tabs are in a logical order and represent a typical workflow in DaVinci Resolve. When working on your project, you will usually start out in the Media tab on the left and then work your way through to the right. In this tutorial I am going to skip the Fusion and Fairlight tab simply because these are better suited for more experienced users and bigger projects. And for now we are going to focus on Media, Edit, Color and Deliver. This is the Media tab and here on the left you can browse through your PC to find the media you need for your project. And if you click on a video, you will get a preview in the window over here. The area below this is the Media Pool. Here you have to place all the media you want to use in a project to be able to access it later on. But before we can start to import our footage, we need to set our timeline to the frame rate we want to work in. You do this by hitting File, then Project Settings, and here you can change the timeline's frame rate in the Master Settings tab. Typically, you want this to match the frame rate you shot your footage in. So, for example, if you shot your footage in 25 FPS, you want your timeline to be also in 25 FPS. If you are not sure what your footage was shot in, there is another way to set up this frame rate. And that's by dragging your footage down into the media pool. If the frame rate is different to the currently set timeline frame rate, a window will pop up and it asks if you want to change the timeline frame rate to match it to your footage. You would then hit change to make your timeline the same frame rate as your footage. I have to stress that this can only be done once in the beginning. As you see, after I clicked change, the timeline was changed to 25 FPS to match my footage and it is now greyed out. Regardless if you set the timeline frame rate manually or clicked change in the pop-up window, after you've imported the first media into the media pool, you will not be able to change the timeline frame rate anymore. So make sure your timeline frame rate is the way you want it to be before you do anything else. Now actually I already kind of showed you how to import footage. You simply find the footage in the media browser and then drag it down into the media pool. And you can also directly drag in footage from your machines explorer window. 
One more quick tip, if you want to structure your footage a bit more, you can add a bin in the media pool. You can do so by right clicking and then selecting add bin. You can rename the bin by right clicking on them and then select rename bin. Bins are essentially like folders in which you can organize your footage. This bin or folder structure will then be shown on the left hand side. Okay, once you imported all the footage you need for your project, it is time to jump into the edit tab. In the top left you can still see the media pool and here is all the footage you imported into it. If you do not see this window, you can simply click onto the media pool button and it will show up. Now to start editing, you do need to create a new timeline. For that, you simply grab the first clip you want to edit and drag it down into the timeline area. As you can see in the media pool, this automatically creates a new timeline. And at the bottom you can see the timeline with your footage in it. Before throwing footage into the timeline, you can also preview it by double clicking on it. It will then show up in the window here. At this point I would recommend that you save your project and you can do this by hitting Ctrl plus S. If that's the first time you saved the project, you will be asked to name the project. If you already saved the project and you hit Ctrl S, the project is saved in the current state and will overwrite the previous save. I recommend to save your project now and then do this regularly while working on it, because if Resolve would crash, you do not lose your hard work completely. Ok, back to the edit tab. You can click in the small section here and scrub around in your timeline. And you can see the video of your timeline in the top right corner. If you hit spacebar, the video starts playing from your playhead position in the timeline and it stops if you hit space again. You can also move your playhead forward and backward by one frame with the left and right arrow keys. You can also zoom in and out of your timeline by holding alt and scrolling with your mouse wheel. And you can move in the timeline left to right by dragging the slider here. Let's go over some of the tools you got here. In the beginning the arrow and blade tool will be the most important ones. With the arrow tool, shortcut A, you can move your footage in the timeline and when you get your cursor close to the edges of your footage, you can click and drag to trim it. With the blade tool, shortcut B, you can cut your footage by simply clicking at the desired cut position in the clip. And if you want to delete a clip out of the timeline, you select it and then hit backspace. One more thing I like to highlight is this little magnet here. This enables or disables snapping. So for example if your playhead gets close to the start or end of a clip, it snaps to it. In some situations this can mess with your precision and then you can disable it. But for the most part I would suggest leaving this turned on. So this is how you can edit your footage. Just drag it in from the media pool and trim or cut it to fit your needs. One more interesting thing in the edit tab is the inspector. You can open it up on the top right. When you have a clip selected, you can do quite a few things with it in the inspector. For example, you can zoom in or out, change its position in the frame, rotate or even crop it. Another important tip is that you can reset pretty much any value you change in Resolve by double clicking on it. So for example, if I would want to reset the rotation here, I simply double click on it and it's back to the default value. Now if you want to add transitions to your clips in the timeline, you can click onto effects library and up here you will find the video transitions. You have a few different transitions to choose from and you can simply drag these to a start or end of a clip or where two clips meet. Simple as that. If you click on a transition in the timeline, you can also customize it even further with the inspector. One more thing before we go on. I have to teach you the most important shortcut. If you only learn one shortcut from this tutorial, then that's the one to remember. It is Ctrl Z. It reverses the last thing you did. And trust me, you will use it a lot. You can even hit it multiple times to undo your last steps. Ok, all the time I talked about video in your timeline, which is highlighted in blue. 
but below that in green you can also find the audio. If you click on the audio part, you can change its volume in the inspector. There are also audio transitions in the effects library and at each start and end of a clip you can find these small handles, which lets you fade the audio in or out. Video and audio in your timeline are both placed in something called tracks and you can create more tracks if you so desire. For example, if you drag in a music bed and have it in a second track below the audio of your footage, you will then hear the audio of your footage and the music bed at the same time. Now that you have your video edited, you can color correct and grade it. And that's done in the color tab. In the middle of the page, you can see your timeline again. It's a smaller version of the one you can see in the edit tab. Here you can also zoom in and out. Hover over it with your cursor, press Alt and then scroll. Above that you have a small preview picture for each clip in your timeline. And these are sorted chronologically. Now if you want to work on a clip you can simply select it by clicking on its preview image or you can select it from the timeline. And you can jump from one clip to the next one by hitting the up and down arrow key. Okay, here at the top you have a preview of your current clip and right next to that you have the so-called node graph and each clip in the timeline will have its own node graph. More complex grades will typically use several nodes here, but when you're just starting out don't worry about that too much and stick to just one node. Let's focus a bit on the things you can do with your video. Down here you can adjust the contrast so if you want your video to be more contrasty, you simply pull this up. Next to that you can change the saturation of your video. You can make it have more saturated colors or desaturate it completely to make it a black and white image. If you switch over to the number 2, here you have the temperature setting. With it you can make your video more orange or more blue. And the tint setting lets you shift the video more towards green or magenta. You can use both of these settings to correct a color cast in your footage or use them creatively to for example warm up your video a bit. And one more important thing is the curves window. If it is not showing on your screen you simply click on the small icon here. With the curve you can manipulate the RGB values in your video and for example make the video a bit brighter by clicking in the middle and dragging this up or pull it down to make the video darker. Of course you can create more points here and shape this curve however you like, but this can get complex pretty quickly and how exactly curves work is a topic for a separate video. One more thing I want to show you is the built-in stabilizer in Resolve. For that you have to go into the tracker window and here you can select stabilizer from the drop-down menu. Simply hit stabilize and Resolve scans the currently selected clip and then stabilizes it. You can tweak the way Resolve stabilizes your footage a bit more with the cropping ratio and smooth setting. And once you update one of them, you have to hit stabilize again. Now Resolve can do so much more in the color tab, it really is a powerful tool in this regard. But I think that should be it for now in the color tab and if you want me to do a full color correcting and grading tutorial, let me know in the comments. Now that you have edited and color corrected your video, you want to export it. For that you have to render it and that's done in the deliver tab. In the deliver tab you can see your timeline once again and check it for the last time. Now as you can see there are quite a lot of things you can change in the render settings on the left, but don't be afraid because for now we will simply use one of the many presets Resolve comes with. You can choose to export for YouTube or Vimeo. Or if you want to work further with the rendered video in Final Cut, Premiere or Avid, you could select one of those presets. And you can even render only the audio of your timeline if you want. Let's say you want to export your video so that it can be uploaded to YouTube. For that you simply click on the small arrow next to the YouTube icon and select the resolution you want your video to be rendered in. I'm currently working in 1080p aka Full HD so that's what I'm going to select. And as you can see Resolve changed all the settings to appropriate values. The YouTube preset results in a pretty good balance between file size and video quality. 
I think this gives you a very good starting point, even if you just want to render the video for other purposes. Of course, there is much more you can tweak in the render settings, but that's also a topic for another video. After that, you can give your video file a name in this area here. And when you click on browse, you can choose the directory the file is rendered to. Once that is done, you click add to render queue and this render job is added to the queue. Then you hit start render and off it goes. Depending on your project and hardware, this might take a while. If everything is done, you can find the rendered video in the directory you determined in the render settings. And here is your final video. Simple as that. Okay, that's all you need to know to get started in DaVinci Resolve quickly. Try to work on simple projects first and once you get the hang of it, you can dive deeper into the more advanced editing, color correcting and color grading. Subscribe if you want to see more videos about DaVinci Resolve in the future and give me a thumbs up if this video helped you out. As always, I will see you in the next one.